This is a little bit off topic than the normal things you get at the Affiliate Summit, but there are people in this room who maybe feel like they need to have their butt kicked a little bit. And essentially, I am here today to yell at you. I'm going to yell at you and hopefully get you out of here feeling like you can be inspired or hate me or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen. So uh, thank you for those of you that did come. And let me know after if I was able to help you and motivate you to, if, if any reason at all. Because, you know, it's really tough to be motivated. I had a really great slide here, a picture of a big 40-foot shark chasing a guy in a kayak. And it said, motivation, it said, uh, now you know it's a good time to paddle, right? Okay, so picture that in your head. I, I can't show it because my PowerPoint slide is not working. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. So, I've been doing internet marketing for about 15 years now, and it wasn't until about 19, or no, it, was, it wasn't until about 2002 when my wife got pregnant by me, and <laughs> we, she, she made a lot of money. She made twice as much as money as I did, and she worked for an advertising agency, and uh, we decided that it was time for her to quit her job and go back to stay at home and be a stay at home mom. She wanted to do that. The problem with that was I had to make her salary and what I was making. And she already made twice as much as I did. So the slide that I was trying to show you here was the motivational slide, was telling you, look, when you need to do it, you can do it. But there are things that gotta trigger you to be successful, right? When she went back to, or when she left her job and went home, or and stayed at home with, with the baby, I had no choice. There was no choice for me to go out there and make it happen. And I know there's a lot of people in this room who have done similar things. When things are going, you know, when, when things are going bad, there's a lot of people who become accidental entrepreneurs, right? There's so many people out there right now who have lost their jobs. And that's essentially how I make my money nowadays, is people come, come up to me and say, Jim, what are we going to do now? I tell you that because there's just so many people out there. And I know that you know that a couple of the times in your life when things have gone wrong for you, you've been able to turn that into something successful simply because you had to, correct? So we're gonna talk about um, getting over yourself. We're gonna talk about how to lose your ego and how to open yourself up to making more money faster than ever, okay? We're gonna talk about avoiding self-sabotage. Learn the difference between the failures and the losers. Uh, move on to move forward. We all make mistakes. Find out uh, how to overcome those mistakes and use them to your advantage. And uh, feeding the fire. How hot does that fire in your belly burn? How bad do you want it? And we're going to talk about failing your way to success. Now there's not a lot of slides in here and I had some really cool pictures in this so but it's not going to look as amazing as I would hoped it would because of the technical difficulties. But uh, at any time you got a question or you want to make a comment or yell or throw something at me, go ahead. So let's talk a little bit about doubt because doubt ultimately kills success. I don't know how many times you've gone to build a business or gone to do something and you've had that thing in the back of your head that says, oh man, I don't know if that's going to work or I don't know if that pricing is going to be right or I don't know if I'm going to put that landing page together the right way and is it going to work? Doubt kills success, especially in the internet business. Everyone in this room should realize that we're internet professionals. One of the advantages of being on the internet is that we can do things quickly and change things and test and make adjustments. But there's still a lot of people who have that thing in their head and they say, boy, I gotta think about this for too long before I go ahead and make it work for myself. I did this with, I've done this millions of times. Most recently, I went to launch a, a group coaching pro program last year. I spent three to four months working on what it was going to be, uh, the price was going to be on it, and all these little details. And I completely killed myself. I lost four months of revenue, specifically because I sat around and tried to figure out the exact right way to do it before I just went out and did it. And what happened was, I was four months behind in my pipeline. And I didn't have any revenue coming in from that channel, which I needed to produce for, my, for that quarter last year. And it was a huge failure for me. What I found out was when I, I uh, officially launched it, 
was that within two weeks, I had heard from my target audience that they liked it or disliked it. In this case, I was right. But if I would have just launched it four months ahead of time, I would have, wouldn't have missed out on all that revenue. So <coughs> doubt hurts us for all those reasons. It hurts us because we just get so caught up on the questions. Can I do this? Am I doing this the right way? Right? And again, everyone's had those questions in their head. The question is, how do you get over those things? You know, in the internet marketplace, you get over them by you just go out and do things. Right? Everybody knows how to do something. You have to be able to move forward if you want to find success in this business. How many times have you gone to produce a project or start a business or do something like that and you've stopped yourself because of the doubt in your head? Or maybe a family member or an associate or a friend or somebody came up to you and just said, that's not going to work. You can't do it that way. That's the wrong way to go about it. Every successful business person who's made millions of dollars and got tons of publicity and everything else has had those same exact feelings as you have. The difference between you and them is they go out and take those doubts and they crush them. And they walk out and they go and they make it happen. Every successful entrepreneurial story started with the same exact thing. Oh boy, this sounds crazy. I don't know if I can do it. And, and everyone else says, you can't do that. And that's exactly what you need to get over. So I want to talk about being productive or perishing. Productivity, when it comes to being successful, is paramount. Distractions in our life kill our productivity. We have so many things going on today. We have Twitter and Facebook and phone calls and all these things going on in our lives today. And you know as well as I do that it's intense. There's so many things happening. The problem is, is that having distractions completely ruin our success to ratio. And there's things that we can do to improve our productivity. Because if you're not being productive, you're dying. It's just not helping you in this business, in any business, right? I just recently turned in a manuscript for a book uh, for 70,000 words, right? I had a deadline last Friday to turn that in. Now, I had to get productive to get that thing done. There was no possible way I was going to get 70,000 words cranked out in less than 30 days with a ton of distractions. A couple of things that I did to get rid of those distractions. I would go and completely shut down my Twitter, obviously. I would set guidelines. Like, for example, I'd say, all right, I'm going to write for the next three hours, and I'm closing my Gmail, I'm closing my phone, I'm closing TweetDeck, I'm closing everything down. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write for that period of time. No matter what, I don't care what happens. What happened was I was able to crank out lots and lots of great content in, the, in that period of time. And I was able to get 70,000 words written in less than 30 days, which is a feat, believe me. But so another thing that I would do is I would set up uh, rewards for myself. And this is something that you can do as well. Um, you know, maybe you say, look, if I reach this goal for the day uh, at noon or whatever, maybe I'll treat myself to a nice lunch. Or if I meet the deadline of having this book done by this day, maybe I'll go and get myself a massage at the fill at summer when I get there, which I still need to do. But, so we really got to find ways to remove the distractions in our life. I know you, you all have the same ones as I do. You know, the problem with it is, is that if you don't get rid of them, you're going to keep going in this cycle of, why didn't I get this stuff done? Why am I not as successful as I, as I should be? Why are all of these other people so successful? Here's exactly why. Because the people who are able to focus and get rid of the distractions are able to sit back and produce products and services and info products and contact more affiliates and on and on and on and on. Until you do this, you're never going to be able to find the level of success that you always wanted to have. This is a big one for me. So we saw Brian Clark this morning uh, on stage. And Brian uh, is a copy blogger. And in the past, it took me years to learn this, this that you have to be remarkable. You have to be extraordinary. And the only way you're going to be remarkable or extraordinary is to go out there and actually do something. I spent years walking around feeling sorry for myself, watching all my friends make millions and millions of dollars. And I would say, why are they so successful and why am I not successful? And I was jealous. 
until I realized that they worked their butts off, right? The truth of the situation is all the really successful people that are at this show work like crazy. As Chris Brogan says, there is no overnight success. Go to his blog and watch his overnight success series. Overnight success does not come from sleeping in. It does not come from playing the Wii all the time. It doesn't come from watching the Lost Marathon on television. Nobody's an overnight success, except a few from the Lucky Sperm Club and you know, a lot of winners, right? If you want to be successful, you have to go to, out and find a way to get rid of that jealousy and quit worrying about what other people are doing and go around and actually do something. I mean, when you hang around really remarkable people, extraordinary people who have done remarkable and extraordinary things, you realize how hard they work. And the products and the services and the things that they put out, it's, it, it's not a mirage. They're not successful just because they're successful. My advice to you is to go and hang out with those people, befriend those people, and learn from them, and find out exactly how much time and effort they put in. Eric puts a ton of time into his affiliate business, you know? But he hangs out with people who, who also do as well. So you see how much time you put in, right? So the question to you is, what have you done? Have you done anything? I meet so many people who come up to me and they're like, well, I just want to be successful, and I want to make you know, this much money. And I'm like, what have you done? And it's, it's a rude way to say it to somebody. And, it's, and people can get kind of upset when you say it. What have you done? Have you done anything? What's that? You showed up here. You showed up here. Thank you very much. What have you done? If you have not done anything, you have zero chance of figuring out how to be successful. I don't care what it is. You have to have some type of signature product, a book, a website, a blog, or whatever. You have to do something remarkable to be remarkable, to be extraordinary. Everyone needs to stop after the show and go, what have I really done? What have I put out that other people go, wow, holy moly, look at what Jim did. That is amazing. This is the only quote I ever wrote in my life. It's doers get what they want and everyone else gets what they get. Doers get what they want and everyone else gets what they get. Because it's a thousand percent true. And it's piggybacking on the theme that I just gave you a second ago. The doers in this room, the people who get the productivity out, the people who do all those things, they get what they want. You get the big fancy house. You get the six week vacation to Europe. You get to hang out with Tim Jones. Everyone else gets what they get. The people who work in the cubicle farms, who are unhappy with their job, that is everyone else. The people who are unhappy, the people who don't like their life, their jobs, or anything, they're everyone else. The guy or gal who's driving around that Ferrari you see when you're driving through your neighborhood, that's the doer. That's the person who went out and started the company, took the risk. That's the person who went out, wrote the book, and got famous. That's the doer. The question for you is, are you going to be that guy? Or are you going to be everyone else? There's so many people at this show that you can walk up to and go, wow, that's the doer. There's so many successful people out there actually doing something. So my challenge to you is to do something. This is where I get a little Tony Robbins-ish. I start getting really, really, really passionate and the spit starts flying. Listen. This is so true. Yeah. So, everyone, when you get home, I want you to just write down something that you can do. You know, this is the biggest thing that most people struggle, struggle with. They're like, what do I do? Just do something. Start doing something. If you wanted to write a book your whole life, sit down and try and do it. Get productive, sit down and figure out and try and, try and do it. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. And they're going to be the doer, and you're going to be the everyone else. And I know nobody in this room wants to be the everyone else, right? So we're blowing through this. Um, this is a tough one when I go into rooms. I once did a, a, a speaking gig in a knitting shop in front of 35 women. Funny side story to that. I was getting ready to go on, on in front of these, these women in the place, and there was one bathroom, and I twittered out. I said, 
how much do you dare me to, to leave the seat up in the bathroom at the, the women knitting shop, which I didn't, and uh, it was fine. Um, so anyway, I walked in that room and I said, look, all the people in this room, are you a loser or are you a failure? I have failed so many times. I can give you a million examples. The failures in this room are the ones who are successful. I failed so many times. I wrote the first ebook on blogging to make money in 2003, before anyone was talking about using blogs to make money, right? I called it Blogs to Riches. It's still a lot. You can download it for free off the site. Blogs to Riches. And what I did is I wrote this ebook and I was trying to sell it for like 24 bucks and all this stuff. I did it completely wrong. What I should have done is done what Darren Rouse did at problogger.com, who I knew before he was problogger. Now he's this gigantic million visits a day, this guy who bought a house from the money he made from blogging. I completely failed at that. I did it the exact wrong way. I own a site called awesomemillion.com. Remember the million dollar homepage? Yes. Right? And all that stuff was happening. There were people were trying all these tricks and things to get people to give them a ton of money. Million dollar homepage. I registered a site called awesomemillion.com. And at awesomemillion.com, which is still alive, you can go and uh, get a certificate that proves you're really awesome. So jimcookgirl.isreallyawesome.com. It's free. Right? But it never took off. It was a complete waste of time. I spent a ton of money on getting it developed. But it was one of those things that I completely failed at. I did get the attention of a lot of people in the business who were able to help me generate a lot of revenue down the road from it. So the failure did lead to success for me. I learned my lesson the, the hard way that it's it's really hard to capitalize on viral type things like that. You really got to get the right press to do it the right way. So, are you a loser or are you a failure? The losers in this room, which are none, because you're in this room, the losers are the people who try something and never try again. The failures are the people who fail hard and fail fast, like Chris, our uh, copy blogger said this morning. Fail hard, fail fast, and try something new. The beauty of this business is that we can go out and do those types of things quickly and figure out what works quickly and what, what doesn't work. If you're not doing that, you're never going to find a path to the success that you really want to have. All right, negativity kills. I don't know about you, but I've been around people who have been negative for a long time. And if you're ever going to find a way to generate income and to be successful in anything, you've got to find a way to get the negative people out of your life. And that comes down to your family, unfortunately. It comes down to friends. It comes down to associates, whatever it may be. Figure out a way to eliminate those people from your life. Because all they're doing is bringing you down. They're saying, you can't do that. That's a dumb idea. That's something that nobody else, uh, the other people have tried, and it's stupid, and you can't do it. Every great entrepreneurial story starts with something like that, like we mentioned before. We can't do that. Or, or it's not going to work, or whatever it is. The people who are continuing to give you the negative vibes are the ones that just have a bad outlook on them. So I think it's really important for you to figure out how to remove the negativity. So there was a slide there that said success. So uh, I got a lot of time left. So, but I, I did want to cover some of the basic principles of what I thought about the, the internet, now that I've kind of gone through my Tony Robbins thing. There are two reasons that people come online. And this is going to go back to uh, what we were talking about earlier. There's two reasons that people come online. Does anyone know what they are? OK. Close. Number one, to have a problem solved. And number two, to be entertained. Everything we do online falls under one of those two buckets. I defy anyone, anyone in this room to give me an example of something that does not fall under one of those two categories. Uh, Tim Carter, a friend of mine, gave me this years and years ago, and he's absolutely true. The reason Google works is because they solve problems. The reason we go online is to be entertained. If you can combine both of those things, you can find a much faster path to success. And ultimately, it's about having your pain taken away. You know. We're talking about motivation here. And I wanted to throw all this stuff in at the end because you got to figure out ways to take pain away from people. That's the genesis for marketing and selling products and services. I don't care what business you're in. If you're an affiliate, 
or a merchant or an outsource manager or whatever it is. You've got to get it into your mindset that what I'm trying to do here is take someone's pain away. When a plumber, when, when your toilet breaks, you don't want to stick your hands down in there and figure it out. You call a plumber because they solve your problem and they take your pain away. And that's the exact same philosophy that you need to have when building products and services or anything else. When people come to Mike's site, they're looking, for, uh, they're looking for coupons and deals. They're looking to get a deal on something. He solves that problem for them. Shopping bargains. He takes the pain away of having to pay too much for that blue Blu-ray display or whatever. Millions of products. And Google understands this. And that's why Google is still the number one. That's why Google's never going to lose this. Because if you look at any of the other websites out there, like Yahoo and AOL or any of those things, you'll see the exact, same, uh, the exact opposite of this. They're portals and they got news and weather and all of this junk on there, right? This is why Google wins. Google wins because they understand that simple wins always. Easy always wins. The metaphors I'm giving you here are for you to take and apply to your own businesses. Everything that you do needs to fall under easy, simple, problem solving. That's why Google wins. And they consistently win. And they will continue to win over time. That logo never changes except maybe on St. Patrick's Day or something. A couple times a year. This is the way it's been and the way it's going to stay because they understand that solving problems is how they make money. That's why everyone goes there. If, if you went to Google and you typed in chicken dinner recipes and you got a bunch of junk back, you would go to someplace else because they wouldn't solve your problems. So think about your website or your blog or your project or whatever that you're doing. What exactly, what exact problems does it solve for, you, for your customer? Because if you're not doing it that way, if you're not understanding that for your customer, then you're gonna have a much harder time to sell that to them. So you have to get those bullet points out and figure out what problems do I solve for my customer? I can't stress how important that is. So are you thinking like Google? Simple, problem solving, customer centric. Here was a good example. When you go to Google and you type in how to fight off a shark, what do you get? You get results about how to fight off a shark. When you go to your website and somebody goes to look for something on your website, what do they get? Do they find what they're looking for? Do you have the answers to their problems? You may think that you have all of this great stuff, but do you really know what they're looking for? Because if you're not giving them the solutions instantly, they're going to find someplace else to go. I want to talk real quickly about branding. So I'm a big branding guy. I love doing branding. Branding to me is, I, I always, this is the kind of a gross way to describe it. Branding is the thick, green, sticky goo that that company puts on your hand. And when you have a good brand, the difference between a good and a bad brand is if it's a good brand, you'll, you'll lick it off your fingers. If it's bad, you go and wash it off. You know, it's everything. It's your entire company. It's everything. It's not logos. It's not all that stuff. Oscar Mayer Wiener, right, has seven of these Wienermobiles that travel around the United States giving out hot dogs and rides and all this stuff. You know, why do they do that? They don't do it to, you know, for that stuff because they want to sell more hot dogs because Oscar Mayer Wiener sells smiles. They don't sell hot dogs. They, they sell enjoyment. Why do Tiger and LeBron go with Nike? Why does Nike have Tiger and LeBron? Because Nike doesn't sell athletic apparel, and basketballs. Nike sells winning, right? You don't sell what you think you sell. Everyone in this room, you may think that you sell something other than you, you think. So everyone try to think about that. Your business doesn't sell this, you sell this. What do you really sell that your customers and the people who give you money really need from you? If you're a dentist, you're not selling, you know, going to the dentist. It sucks going to the dentist. You're selling, taking that pain away. You're not having to attach it to the doorknob and pull it out yourself, right? When I go hire an attorney or, or I go hire uh, somebody to do my taxes, they don't sell me the ability to do taxes. They sell me taking my pain away because I have no idea about numbers. It's a huge problem for me, or I'm afraid, fear. 
you know, a fear that I may get uh, an audit. That's what they sell me, at least the good companies do. Yeah, so everyone in this business, in this room needs to think about what you sell that's different. Going back, you see the whole circle here with the problem solving thing. You sell something different than what you think you sell. And until you figure that out, you're gonna have a much harder time of connect, connecting with your customers. And this could be affiliates, this could be anyone. Problem solving, selling what you think, and lead with what you sell. You know, 37 Signals is a great site. And they sell um, pro more productivity, right? It's one of the things that they sell. They don't say, we make web software that does this, this, and this. They say, we save you time and money. <laughs> you know, at the very genesis of every product, if you can lead with something like, we save you time, or we save you money, you've got a good jumping point there. So uh, we're gonna run through a couple of universal truths of today's internet. And of course, nobody reads anymore, they scan. You guys all know this. But yet, when I go to your websites and I go look, I see all kinds of content. I see all kinds of things that nobody is reading through. So this is just kind of a wake up call reminder to you that nobody's reading. This was true 11 years ago. It's even more so true now. I read, uh, somebody told me that the average attention span online now is uh, 2.7 seconds, which by the way is equivalent to how long it takes to read a tweet or something. I mean, people are becoming to a point now where they have no uh, ability to, to read a page anymore at all. They have to be able to just get it as quickly as possible, have their problem solved as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, what designers build and what users see. This is from Steve Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think. If you've never read that book, I highly recommend you go and buy it. If you don't like the book, send it to me, and I'll send you some money for it, and I'll give it away to somebody else. It's that good of a book. I've read it six times, and it's been only been out seven years. Changed the way that I did business online. Building products, yes. What was it called? Don't Make Me Think. Just don'tmakemethink.com. Steve Krug, K-R-U-G. So what Steve says is what designers build is a big website that's got a bunch of stuff like this here. What users see is I have a problem and I need it solved. We're going back to this whole cycle thing of the problem solving thing here. Or I need this. There's usually two to three things that people will come to your website for to have their problem solved about. If you haven't figured out what those two to three things are yet, you're in big trouble. In big, big trouble. You have to find out, and you have to be able to get rid of all of the other junk that nobody's looking for. When you go to orbits.com, you're going there probably to book a flight of car on the top. You're not, you know, 99.9% .9 of the traffic is going there for that. Maybe someone else is looking for the about page, right, or a phone number or something. You have to figure out what people are looking for. And until you do that, you're going to have a much harder time of solving their problems and making money. That's what this is all about. We want to earn more revenue. We want to get more leads. We want to get more publicity. And we're never going to do that until we understand what our customers are thinking. There's Steve's book. So another universal truth of today's internet is that people don't want to be interrupted anymore. And we all know this. You know, that's why traditional media is kind of fading away a little bit. It's not going away, but it's fading away. People don't want to be interrupted anymore. There are a million things going on, TV, People got their remote control, and there's short attention spans happening right now. People want to get their problem solved right away and get away. When they come on your site and looking for coupons, they want to find it and get the heck out of there. And if you can't deliver that to them, then you are not going to be as successful as you possibly can. So that's why you have a great site and you do that. People have short attention spans. They want to come online, get it, and get the heck out. There's, if you haven't noticed, there's you know, trillions and trillions of web pages out there. There's a million competitors to you at this point. I mean, you make an iPhone app program, you make whatever it is you make, there's a million competitors out there for you. I just wrote a book called Attention, This Book Will Make You Money. And, you know, look, there's got to be a way for you to stand out. That's what the genesis for the whole book is. What do you do to stand out to make yourself more noticed? And coming back to this conversation here, in a sea of so many other things happening, one of the ways you're going to do that is by going back to the whole problem solving and understanding your customers. And I know you all know this. 
right? This is not new. Some people are looking at me like, I know this. The, the point of this coming in here and having me repeat it to you is that it gets stuck into your head again. I, I do the same thing all the time. I know that I need to have great usability, and I know I need to do website optimizing, and I know I need to have my landing pages tested, and I know I need to do all these things. But then I walk into Jay Berkowitz's panel, and he reminds me exactly what I needed to do. And I go home and I do it. That's why you're here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to pretend that you don't know all of this stuff. You know it, but you have to apply it. If you don't go out and make this stuff happen, you're going to be back where you were. Where do you want to be in a year from now? Where do you want to be six months from now when I see you in New York at the Affiliate Summit? I'm expecting two to three people from this room to walk up to me in New York and say, Jim, you were right. I finally sat down and I built that project. I finally went and registered that domain name. And I went out and built it and I did 100 grand in sales last month. And you're going to walk up to me and you're going to say thank you very much. It happens to me all the time. But I know someone in this room needs to do that. I am hoping you're going to do that. Maybe you'll come and buy me a steak dinner. Right? You're going to be there. This guy. What's your name? Kevin. All right, Kevin. So it's up to you. In New York, you're going to come up and say, all right, good. we got to take it. All right. So real quick, let's wrap up with a couple of things, the universal truths of the internet. People want bargains. Mike uh, from Shopping Bargains knows this more than anyone, right? People want bargains. I don't care what it is that you sell. I don't care what it is that you sell. If you are a, a shoe repair guy, if you sell whatever, tablecloths, people will more buy from you more often if you give them a deal, or at least give them the perception that they're getting a deal. So many people come to me with consulting services, and they're like, well, I, I can't. Coupons. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm like, there's lawyers, right? Lawyers come to me. I, I can't, I can't have coupons. That's, that's cheesy. You know, no one's going to respect me. Who cares? You're going to make money. Because the, 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 the truth about humans is that they want to feel like they're getting over on somebody else when they buy a product. As consumers, we want to feel like that. And we're more likely to buy a product when that happens. So always, 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 always have some type of discount on whatever you're selling. This is a universal truth of the internet. And I don't care what it is you're selling. Have some type of discount and put it in their face. And say, you're getting 30% off of this. You're getting 10% off of this. If you don't have the margins, build it into the cost. Because you'll make more money selling the product, even if your price went up, just from the fact that people think they're getting the deal. Happens every day. I want to tell you this real quick story about a company that, um, that I'm a fan of, and then I'm gonna get off the stage. And the reason I wanna tell you this story is because I'm a big fan of how they did it, and I wanna tie this whole thing into the motivation and the success of the internet and everything. So there's a company in Cleveland called CrossFit Cleveland, and I don't know if anyone knows what CrossFit is. It's a, a, a physical fit fitness workout thing. Um, it's a franchise, so you can buy them, or there's 12,000 all over the United States, whatever. But the guy in Cleveland has one, it's called CrossFit Cleveland. And CrossFit is not like your regular gym. You don't go to the gym and there's fancy people greeting you and it's all cushy and you, know, you get massages. It's like going into like the old YMCA or the Rocky boxing thing, right? You go in and they, they, they really work you out. Now, I've been going for six months. I've dropped two pant sizes. I've gotten much stronger than I used to be. I'm much healthier. I need to lose a lot of weight. But, um, but what I love about CrossFit is that these guys understood that it was real easy to find success if they went out and did something. They went out and applied every single one of those principles that we talked about today. All the way through the motivational stuff, all the way through um, the universal truths of the internet. All of those things they applied. And here's the story for these guys. So I originally found out about CrossFit through Twitter. Somebody said, well, you should go to CrossFit. And I'm like, what's that? And they sent me a video on YouTube. And I went and I watched a video, a five minute video of them showing people lifting tires and doing all this crazy stuff. And I watched that video and within five minutes of that video I said, I'm joining. Right? From a video that he made in, in, for probably a thousand bucks. You know? He didn't have to get me through an advertisement. He didn't have to get me by seeing him speak or anything. He got me through, somebody recommended him through Twitter. 
who found me, who pushed me into YouTube, and then I, I watched the annotation on the YouTube video, which then took me to his blog. Within 10 minutes, I had sent him money in my PayPal account, and I never even talked to that guy. Because he had every single one of those things in place. He had the discounts. He had everything in place. And I didn't even have to talk to him. And that's what you really want, isn't it? It's the ability for your customers to come in and just buy a product from you or your services without even having to pick up the phone or send you an email. That's our real goal here. And if you apply the principles that we talk about and the motivational stuff, the things that we do. So if you first build it, if you first build it, there was a great interview there. But if you first build it, if you go out there and do it, you're going to be able to then go out and apply these principles. That's kind of, kind of why I wanted to have both things going for you today. So, the question for you then is, now what? We're done. Now what? What are you going to do when you go home? What are you going to do when you get back in the office next week? You're going to do it. Okay. Somebody want to say, you are going to have to do it because I want to see you in six months from now. I want to see you come up to me and say, Jim, wow, that was what I needed. I needed to get the little kick. Come on. Everyone in this room has the opportunity to be remarkable, to be extraordinary. I do, actually, at fivedaybootcamp.com. <laughs> Listen, I failed a million times. And because of my failures, I've been able to come out and find success. I used to be frightened to come up on stage. I used to be frightened to try things. Um, you know, real quick, I'll tell you this story. I, uh, I did this project years ago called MarkCubanPleaseCallMe.com. Everyone know who Mark Cuban is? Billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks, sold broadcast.com to Yahoo for like $4 billion, literally. But uh, I said, I want to figure out if I can get this guy to call me. And I, I put a little website together called MarkCubanPleaseCallMe.com and I put a press release on it and I sent it out across the wire back, this was like four years ago when the wire still existed technically. And a press release and I had a reporter from the Dallas Morning News call me the day after I sent it out. I didn't tell anyone about it. And he said, well, I cover Mark Cuban. Why don't, you, uh, why don't we do an interview because I want to write a story about how uh, you did, you're doing this cool project to see if you could get him to call you. So I did the story. The guy calls me, the reporter calls me back in about two hours and he says, I just spoke to Mark and he tells me that he, hate, he hates you. <laughs> and I was like, I've never met the man in my life. I have no idea. How does he know he hates me? Long story short, there was like another guy named Jim Kay who had been blogging crap about him for years and he thought I was that guy. The moral of the story is though, is that the guy, within a day of me doing nothing, knew who I was. So I want to tell you how I've leveraged that since that time. The very first thing I was able to do was he went to do a, a speaking gig, at, a keynote speech at Blog World Expo three years ago, and they asked me to go and introduce him on stage. So I got to meet him and introduce him, and I've since leveraged that into having business relationships with a billionaire. And it cost me $80 in a domain name. Right? I'm now able to send emails to Mark Cuban and get him to respond to me. I asked him last week if he would write a blurb for my book, and he said yes. There's advantages to having a billionaire answer your emails, right? But the, the, the point of this is, is, the reason I was able to do that is I took a chance. The reason I was able to do that is I got creative. I made it happen. If I would have said, this is never going to work, it's a dumb idea. Uh, I'm going to waste my time. It, I would have never had this relationship with him. I mean, I, I mean, he's not inviting me to go to, to you know, Mavericks games, but he will take my emails and he will give me advice. And maybe someday I can turn that into something bigger. It has actually turned into a revenue producing opportunity as well. So there's many things that have come. But if I hadn't done it, if I hadn't sat down and, and tried it, it where would I be? I can give you a, a thousand of those stories, but I want you to start thinking about the ones that you've let slip away. The ideas that you've had, that you said, it'll never work, no one will like it, I'm going to look like a fool, I'm wasting my time. Really? You never know what's going to happen. Fail hard, fail fast. Go out there and try some things. You may never know what's going to happen. 
So uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you very much, everybody. I got done a little bit early. Hopefully, get some motivation going. And I want you to come see me in six months and tell me how much money you made. And then give me a cut. All right, thanks, everybody.